With the conclusion of the American Civil War, cartridge developers continued to work steadily during the mid-19th century to improve on then-preliminary cartridge designs. By General Lee's surrender, advances in weaponry within a decade led to new standards of long arms going forward, repeating weapons chambered for metallic cartridges. The production of rimfire metallic cartridges for repeating arms during this time was dangerous, and the power that rimfire cartridges produced was limited to the nature of the cartridges design. Considerably outnumbered by muskets on the battlefield, repeating weapons proved their worth even with their limitations. In February 1866, Hiram Badan patented his first improved metallic cartridge design. In this patent, the Brevet Major General stated that the purpose of the process he introduced was the safe manufacturing of cost-effective metallic cartridges. Forming the cartridge was similar to how a rimfire case was formed, except priming was to be done separately. Berdan went on to perfect his concept with the release of a second patent in March 1866. In this patent, Berdan explained how the external primer cup was to be constructed and filled with fulminite separately to then be inserted into the case's palmer pocket and sealed. In early 1866, Berdan and Erskine Allen submitted for General Winfield Hancock's Board of Ordnance Officers' approval their patented converted rifle musket designs for modern RS long arms going forward. Both designers, throughout the trials, continued to modify their submitted long arms to accommodate the board's request for an arm capable of handling Edwin Martin's 58 caliber cartridge. So that his weapon could handle Martin's bar and anvil round, Berdan introduced the friction plunger and spring for his number four alteration. Political connections, corporate sponsors, and current technology at the time ultimately pushed the board to adopt Allen's improved conversion system over not only Berdan's entry, but also the exposed centerfire cartridge concept he had introduced. Allen's second conversion system was like his first system affixed to a modified rifle musket. And like the Model 1865, the Model 1866 retained almost all of its vintage parts. But unlike his first conversion system, the weapon's 58 caliber bores were reamed out to 64 caliber, and then fitted with a liner to accept a more modern cartridge. Frankfurt Arsenal's Martin Prime Metallic Cartridge, the 5070 United States Government. Springfield Armory went on using Allen's evolving conversion systems with the introduction of the Model 1873 chambered for Stephen Bennett's inside prime cartridge, the 4570 United States government. Subsequent variants of the hinge block action followed up to 1894, when the trapdoor action and gunpowder cartridge were considered obsolete, replaced with the Springfield Model 1892 Krag rifle and 3040 government. The United States military first standard issue repeating bolt action long arm chambered for the new smokeless cartridge. As the West opened up again and the need for arms by settlers rose, not deterred with his conversion system and cartridge design failing to be adopted by the federal government, in 1869 Berdan introduced the 58 United States musket cartridge for the breech loaded conversion system he developed. The cartridge that went west was domestically produced in the east by both the Union Metallic Cartridge Company and the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. According to original specs, the overall length of the 58 musket was 2 and 15 hundredths. Berdan's cartridge, intended to be fired through a war vintage 58 caliber barrel, was seated with a 589 thousandths diameter, 530 grain, 3 grooved bullet. As a cartridge with more case capacity, the 58 musket produces less pressure within the converted breech than the 50 government. At the time it was introduced, standard velocity of the straight wall rifle cartridge with 60 grains of gunpowder was 1,100 feet per second. Berdan's efforts to profit from his breech-loaded conversion system and cartridge designs did eventually pay off. While these systems were not fully adopted by the United States government, they were incorporated into both civilian and military converted 58 caliber rifled muskets. In 1869, Russia adopted his rifled musket conversion system for the Kronuka Model 1869 and Berdan 1 rifles. Spain adopted both the 58 musket and conversion system for its Modelo 1857 and 5759 14x8mm rifled muskets. 
approximately 5,000 Model 1861 and 1863 rifle muskets made by the Jenks Armory in Norwich were converted by Joseph and George Henry Needham of Great Britain to their patented side-swing breech-loading design. Needham chambered these arms to accept Berdan's 58 cartridge. The Brown Manufacturing Company of Newburyport, Massachusetts converted 58 caliber vintage British pattern 1853 rifle muskets to single shot bolt action breech loaders chambered for the 58 musket and the old Frankfurt Armory 58 rimfire cartridge too. In 1886, gunpowder cartridges became obsolete. The 58 musket was commercially produced up to the start of the 20th century, but with the advent of smokeless powder, interest in gunpowder cartridges began to fall. By 1900, Verdan's conversion system and cartridge had been considered obsolete for quite some time. Weaponry by this time was near the end of transitioning to arms capable of handling smokeless powder cartridges for both military and civilian use. Berdan's innovative designs to make his conversion system accept Martin's bar and anvil cartridge in 1886 would eventually pay off, and the government's modified continued use of his friction plunger and tension spring. Two years after the inventor's death, his widow in 1895 was awarded a judgment on patent infringement. The court found that Springfield Armory not only used key essential features in Allen's system that Berdan designed but the government failed to compensate him for the army modifications that were incorporated into the trapdoors manufactured from 1867 to 1894. The 58 United States musket serves as a footnote in the annuals of the development of cartridges as a vacant cartridge not for everyone's consideration throughout the last half of the 19th century. As the system and cartridge saw use internationally, Today, converted rifle muskets and 58 musket are far and few between. Carbines and 58 Berdan carbine are exceptionally rare to find, but that doesn't mean that they cannot be found. As for Hiram Berdan's vacant cartridge, it has not simply slipped away into obscurity as it is still available through reloading, but unlike the original 58 musket, metallic cartridge reloaders can now use boxer primers instead. As with the name synonymous with accuracy, these converted rifle muskets and 58 musket produce exceptional results, even to today's standards.